you can apply all methods you learn to find data series of real functions to their complex counterparts. In this video, we will encounter a few examples related to the exponential function. Well, you know, f of z equals sum m from 0 to infinity and derivative in uh, 0 divided by n factorial times z to the power n, which is not so nice because you have to differentiate infinitely many times unless the derivatives are easy, like for example with the exponential function e to the power z. All derivatives you may e to the power z also have you have a complex function. So it means that if you evaluate at zero, uh, any derivative will be just one, which means that we have as a data search for the exponential function. Again, just as in the real case, n from zero to, to infinity, z to the power n over n factorial. And you can do the ratio for test, for example, to establish that the radius of convergence is uh, infinity, so converges for all z. Now we can use this known data search, for example, to find the data search of e to the power 2z. You just substitute 2z on the spot of z, so you get the n factorial here again, and then 2z to the power n instead of z. So it becomes a 2 to the power n times z to the power n over n factorial. Converges uh, if 2z is smaller than infinity, so converges for all z as well. Next example. How can we find the Taylor series of z cubed times e to the power 2z? Well, a power series is a series in powers of z. So an additional factor of z cubed doesn't matter because it's already a power of z. So we get z cubed times the power series we already had, sum n from 0 to infinity to the power n, z to the power n over n factorial, and then you can take in the z cubed, doesn't depend on n, so you can take it in the summation to get a z to the power n plus 3 over here. And there we have uh, our second example. Then third example, our series of sine z. Of course we can do the same trick as we did uh, for uh, real functions, but we can also use a substitution now because we know that sine z equals 1 over 2i e to the power i z minus e to the power minus i z. We can find the power series of e to the power i z. We can find the power series of e to the power minus i z. Only difference is the factor minus 1 to the power n. So if we uh, subtract the two, uh, all the uh, cases where n is uh, even will cancel out because then the minus 1 to the power n equals 1 and then both shares this one and that one are the same so you get 0. So you only get twice for n odd uh, this one. Uh, so you can write it only uh, or you have only n odd so you can write uh, n equals 2m plus 1 and then and from 0 to infinity, so you get twice uh, and substitute on the spot of n to m plus 1, so i to the power 2 m plus 1, and here factor 2 m plus 1. Uh, and then uh, you see uh, that your sine of z has an additional factor of 1 over 2i, so 1 over 2i times 2, and here uh, i to the power 1 equals i times 2i, and i to the power 2m equals i squared to the power n, so minus 1 to the power m. And you keep the other factors like you had over there. And then you see that those cancel out. So you get it's m from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power n, so to the power 2m plus 1 over 2m plus 1 factorial, which is, by the way, uh, the same as the one from uh, real calculus, the same data series. Then later on we will learn that you can interchange differentiation and, in, uh, and summation and integration and summation. We will use it already to find the power series of the cosine, it's the derivative of the sine. And if you differentiate the sine, you keep the minus 1 to the power m like that. z to the power 2m plus 1 becomes 2m plus 1 times z to the power 2m. So your left is 2m plus 1 over 2m plus 1 factorial, but 2m plus 1 factorial equals 2m plus 1 times 2m factorial, so you have a 2m factorial. And that's already our fourth example, the cosine of z. Also the same, uh, by the way, as the, uh, the uh, true counterpart. And then we can, of course, plug in i z uh, in the sine, so we get the sine of i z, so that yields uh, 1 over 2i 
e to the power i z minus e to the power minus minus i z. So this yields uh, e to the power minus z minus e to the power plus z or a minus e to the power uh, minus e to the power minus i z, uh, which is exactly uh, i times the sine hyperbolic of z. So the uh, we can find the power series of the hyperbolic sine by using minus i times the uh, uh, power series of the sine of i z. So we get the minus i, so m from 0 to infinity, and then we plug in uh, i z in the power series of the sine over here. So we get the uh, minus 1 to the power m over there. Uh, the 2 m plus 1 factorial just remains where it is. Uh, we get the i z to the power 2 m plus 1, so i to the power 2 m plus 1 times the z to the power 2 m plus 1. Uh, i to the power 2 m plus 1 equals i times i to the power 2 m equals uh, i squared to the power m, so minus 1 to the power m, which cancels out. This is minus 1 to the power m, and we get the i times minus i, which cancels out with z1. So we are left with this a series over here to the power of 2 m plus 1 divided by 2 m plus 1 factorial. And there we have the power series of the sine hyperbolic offset. So you see that uh, finding like this Taylor series or power series expansions of uh, complex functions works exactly the same. You can use all the same tricks you learned when you were studying single variable calculus.